Hey folks, I'm Mr. Hartzler and I wanted to talk to you about completing the square. So I have another video that's very similar to this, but I thought I would go a little bit more in depth and at least provide you with more examples of nothing else. So let's get started. The main target for this is that you can solve quadratic equations by completing the square. That's the main goal for this whole video. And let's go and do our first example. So we're right here. What are the solution or solutions of 9 equaling x squared minus 16x plus 64? So there's a couple of ways I can do this. I can start off by subtracting that 9 over and then trying to factor it um, or completing the square. But actually this one, I can kind of already factor. And I'm noticing that because I'm looking at the 64 and I'm looking at the 16. Both of those have a whole lot to do with 8. So I'm going to see if I can factor as is. And then maybe that'll be a simpler solution for us. So that's going to be what multiplies to give me the 64 and what adds to give me a negative 16. Well, negative 8 and negative 8 are going to make that happen for both of those things. So I actually have this. This one's already a little bit cute, already factored or factorable from the get-go. So I'm going to simplify this a little bit more. So now that it's squared, I can actually take the square root of both sides here. So let's just do that. So square root of 9 is plus or minus 3. And that's just because a 3 squared gets me 9, and a negative 3 squared also gets me a 9. So on the right side, I now have the square root and the square cancel. A lot of people don't know this, but there's actually a little 2 inside a square root, and a 3 inside a cube root, and so on. And this is then just x minus 8. I'm going to split this up into two different cases. I'm going to change my color for that. Uh, let's do this orange color. So I have a positive 3 equals x minus 8, and I have a negative 3 equals x minus 8. And I'm going to solve for x for both of these. So I end up with x equaling 11 and x equaling 5. But I need to check that. So uh, off to the right here, I'm actually going to double check both of those to make sure it's true. So does 9 equal, if I plug 11 in. So I'm going to do all of this math and we'll see if it works. Ready? All right, so that one actually worked out. It all added up, equaled 9. Perfect. Let's test the other one just to make sure that it also works. All right, so that one did work. We ended up actually having both of those check out perfectly fine, which is awesome. They're both solutions, but I really should keep checking those every time we go. So let's go and try our next example, folks. So how can I solve this equation now by completing the square? So there's definitely nothing on the left I can do because it's just a 0 now. So let us try and complete this square here. I'm starting off by writing the original. Now I'm actually going to add in squares. So x squared minus 2x plus a square minus a square. And then there's that plus 3. So that plus 3, I'm just dragging over there, hanging out. And then the x squared and negative 2x just came down like normal. Now you'll notice I added the boxes, right? A plus a box and minus a box. As long as I put the same thing in both boxes, they cancel. And I'm good. So we really need to be careful here. And figure out what goes in that box. So I'm going to take my middle term, my b value, and I'm going to divide it by 2. So that's a negative 2 over 2. And then I square it. So again, that's uh, my b value, whatever it is, divide it by 2. And then I'm going to square it. That's going to give me whatever goes in my box equals the number inside my box. Negative 2 divided by 2. What's turned on? Negative 2 divided by 2 is just negative 1. I square that and I get a normal 1. So I'm going to put a positive 1 in both these boxes. You notice I'm adding a 1 then subtracting a 1, so we're all fine. Have not changed what this equation looks like. So now I'm actually going to factor this chunk right here. So it's going to be an x minus 1 and x minus 1. It will actually always be whatever this is inside the parentheses. That's kind of the neat thing about it. You built it, you designed it a specific way so that it would factor like this. So that's the awesome thing about it. And then my stuff on the outside is just going to simplify to a plus 2. I can simplify this just a smidge more. Now I simplified it by combining this left side of uh, the right side, leftish side of the right. You know, I simplified this stuff by combining them and saying that they were just the same thing squared. Now I still have to solve it, though. I'm not done yet. So I'm going to subtract this 2 over. Subtract this 2 over. Now... I need to write all those down. But now it's looking a little bit shady, right? I have a stuff over here that's square, so I need, to, I need to square root it now. But we know on the right, this is going to be i square root of 2. 
plus minus because I'm taking a square root of a negative number. That's my last video. Go check that out if you need more help with complex numbers. And then this is going to equal x minus 1. So now I actually have to add that 1 over so that everything is all on the left side and my x is by itself. So plus 1, plus 1. I need to rewrite this because I'm just out of space here. So let's do this right here. And we have x equaling 1 plus or minus i times the square root of 2. That ends up being my answer. Looks a little bit shady. Looks a little bit weird, but it is okay. It's nothing too crazy about this. So we've completed the square up top. And we then, in doing so, we factor. This is kind of getting something from standard form to vertex form for quadratic functions. And from there, we then needed to just solve for x. So I sub added or subtracted whatever was next to the parentheses. Then I square rooted everything. And then I added over whatever was in the parentheses. All right, let's keep going, folks. So now in this example, let's write the equation in vertex form and graph it. So to get this into where we at and it gets us into vertex form, I am going to have to complete the square. So y equals, I'm actually going to start off by factoring out whatever is in front of my x squared. Whatever my a value is, I have to factor that out. It's just how this is going to have to work. So minus 3, that's going to be factored out of both of these terms. I'm going to leave the 7 alone, leave it alone. And I end up with then x squared plus 3x. I'm going to add my box right here. Then I'm going to subtract a box and then my plus seven, right? He has to be somewhere. And where he's going to drop them right there. But you'll notice this negative three is eventually going to be distributed to this box, which means it also has to get distributed to this box. So I have a negative three here as well. Let me change colors and let's figure out what goes inside this box. So it's going to be three, that's my B value, divided by two and then squared. Well, that it ends up being 9 over 4. 9 fourths in both of these spots. Don't be too afraid of the fractions. It's going to be okay. Real life has fractions a lot of the time. Now, let us factor this, uh, this side over here. So we have 3 on the outside just coming straight down. We'll factor the set of parentheses. It's going to be x plus 3 halves. I have talked about this in previous videos, but whatever I divide by 2, that number, ooh, cutting through some stuff, ends up going right here, always. That is how this will factor every single time, guaranteed. And then this is, of course, squared. And then double negative, so I have a plus 3 times 9 over 4 plus 7. That was a whole lot of stuff going on. Um, let me erase some of my old arrows. Hopefully that helps a little bit. So I divided uh, my three halves, uh, that part there, my b divided by two. That is how this is going to factor. So that's what goes right here. And we can keep going with this a little bit. So I have y, this negative three, nothing to do there. Three halves squared. But what is three times nine over four? I can't reduce the three and the four any. So that's just going to be 27 over four plus seven. I don't get my students' calculators, so we have to do this a long way. Uh, so we have to get a common denominator between 27 fourths and 7. So I have to multiply this by 4 over 4, which gets me 28 fourths. So I'm going to erase that 7, replace it with a 28 over 4. 28 over 4, and then I have to combine those two things. 27 plus 28. Uh, well, let's see, that is 15 and 5. Cool, 55 fourths y equals negative 3. Oh, sorry, some of that was cut off by my face. My bad. x plus 3 halves, and then plus 55 fourths. I know we hate the fractions, but it is what it is, right? The vertex of this is then going to be opposite of this, so a negative 3 halves. The actual that, so an actual 55 fourths, and this has a negative amplitude, so I know I'm going down, frowny face. My hand didn't do well in the video. So I have a maximum, and it's going to be at that vertex. So it is, um, I'll write just a max at 55 fourths as well. But it is going to happen at the vertex, wherever that vertex is. All right, hopefully that wasn't too fast for anybody. Oh, that's it, folks. We're done. Awesome.
sweet. If you like this video, click that like button down below. If you didn't like it, then just go somewhere else and find a better video. I don't know what to tell you. Have a great day, everybody, and uh, enjoy it, and make sure you keep doing math carefully and with enthusiasm. Bye, everybody.